All right. Uh, I don't know if we have anybody on in the event yet. Um, but the Thunder win, amazingly, an amazing comeback. Uh, Michele Bear is about to join me to talk about it. The Thunder win 107 to 99. They were down by as many as five, or 25. I can't, I can't even talk because I'm just so flabbergasted by this game. Uh, so I've got the chat going. Michele should be joining me soon. Uh, Let's see. We have a few already joined, so welcome to the show. Uh, I just saw this stat. Russell Westbrook outscored the Jazz over the past over the uh, last twenty minutes of the game, thirty-three to twenty-eight, which is just absolutely insane. He was on fire. You know, the game it was. They were down twenty-four. Hello, Alex. They were down twenty-four. And Russ hit those two threes, and they're down 18. And I kind of made like a sarcastic joke, like, oh, everybody on your feet, the Thunder are down by 18. Here we go, guys. This is going to be great. Uh, just kind of joking. And those two threes were – that shifted the momentum for the Thunder. That and these little babies. But for real, it was an insane game. Um, Kelly's online. Hey, Andrew. Uh, Kelly, what can you hear me? in the world? Yes, I can. We're live. What in the world did we just watch? Um, well, we did our good base, like good amount of counter jinx, and finally it worked. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you switch candies, I tweet done. <laughs> Capital yes, letters. I and saw that. I was done too. We were all done. All yeah, of us. Yeah, yeah. We were all yeah, done. Yeah. It was it was actually a done game. I mean, uh, I don't know what happened. Uh, well, I know what happened, but I don't know how uh, Russ, after probably the roughest week basketball wise of his week of, of his life, mm -hmm. he came up with that performance. I, I, it's it's really it's really what what makes him uh, terrible and special and unique in, in the same. Yeah. Uh, all in the same person. There was there was a definitive time, and it was really after those threes that you saw Russell was back. You saw mm -hmm. Russell again because we hadn't seen him in a while. We hadn't seen that Russ. I thought in my head he is hurt, and that's probably what I'm going to go with. Like he's hurt. He's not able to recover mentally. He's not there either. And we'll see if he can come back and be better next season. Mm -hmm. and like that's what I was fully prepared to say on this tonight. And then, like he looked like Russell again. Like, he's running up and down the court. He's attacking the basket. He's hitting his mid-range shot. He looks like he has confidence. I mean, it was just unbelievable. Uh, we are going to. Um, I'll answer some questions here in a bit, but Michele and I are going to break the game down a little bit more, and then we'll get to your questions. I can answer your Mellow questions. I do have uh, a little bit of insight on Mellow. So, oh, okay. Um, but we'll, we'll get to that in just a second. What, what else did you see from tonight? Well, um, I also listened to the interview that you posted on Periscope. Uh, thank you for doing that, by the way, so that we can uh, all <clears throat> listen uh, to what Billy had to say. And I think that, yes, uh, in the first half, the pick and roll coverage uh, was kind of different already from what we saw in game three and game four. Uh, game four, it was less helping um, of a shooters. I thought that Utah made a lot of trees also in not very open or easy situations. Uh, but then what changed really was the fact that everybody was capable of holding off his man mm -hmm. in the third. Like, with system defense, you can do only as much as... Like, you cannot really defend um, for, for 48 minutes just with team defense. Your man needs to be uh, under control. And Abrina stepped up and did a very, very good stretch against Donovan Mitchell by leaving him, like, the pull-up from three and basically trying to deny everything else uh grant was incredibly effective uh defensively it was also a deterrent at the rim and russ did not 
lose Rubio all over the court. Right. And like and and on the top of that, they decide to switch certain pick and rolls so that the coverage was more easy to the one-on-one -on -one coverage was easier. And so I thought that that part of the game was really underrated. And I think, yes, Russ got hot. And without Russ being hot, you don't win this game. Uh, but also with uh, Grant and Abrino stepping up big time and Paul George stepping up big time on defense, you cannot win this game. Right. I think my favorite non-Russell Paul George moment was Abrinas blocking Donovan Mitchell and mm -hmm. then going on the other end and hitting a corner three. And it was just like, you know, like we're both dads. We have these moments where we're proud fathers. Your son <laughs> paints a cool okay. picture. He learns how to read. And had the same same feeling in my belly whenever that happened. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a good, good block. And and a very nice running transition. I made a video like two seconds after the game. <laughs> I just went yes, back to it yeah. and, and recorded. Um, I mean, Abrinas in this playoffs, he's playing better. And yeah. in, the second, in the second part of the season, he's playing better. And with a, with a, against a team, a team like you, that it doesn't allow you to cut and to take advantage of cuts because the, the area is packed. The painted area is packed. Mm -hmm. Having a shooter like Abrinas on the court really helps. And yeah, that was big for OKC to to like. If Abrinas' defense is the one with, that we saw, uh, it allows OKC to have more shooting on the on the perimeter. I'm not complaining by by, by the lack of minutes uh, of Abrinas during the season because there were times where his defense was abysmal. But if he plays like that, sure. Jenny has to stay on the court. Kind of makes me feel less like a crazy person because we're both of us like we both like our big Alex Sabrinas fans like we mm -hmm. like what he brings to the table. He's a really smart player. He can shoot it. The Thunder needs shooting desperately on the court. Uh, he only had three points tonight. Uh, if you told me he had thirty points, I would say, "Yep, I think he did. I think he did," <laughs> because his impact was just that big. It really was to be able to play him. What did he end up playing? 24 minutes in that game, he was a plus 18 in those 24 yeah. minutes. Yeah. There's, it's not a coincidence that he was no. on the court during that run. It's really not. I don't think they could have done the same thing with Brewer out there because you don't have to guard him. Mm -hmm. And you have you have the great picks that were being set for Russ and for Paul, and you have spacing on the other side of the court. Mm -hmm. There's there's just there's no question. That's why they were getting those open shots. And you know, a, a lot of tonight was that Russell got so. Hot. He was five yeah. of nine from three. Um, he was unbelievable on the defensive boards, which they needed him to be. Uh, he was just very good, and he got hot from mid range. And you know, you're gonna win when you play like that. I mean, they were they were just so abysmal up until those two threes that Russell hit. I mean, they. I mean, it, it's crazy. I don't think that I've seen a such a bad performance followed up by such a great performance in the exact same game like that. It was, uh, it was unbelievable. It really was. Yeah. And, um, like Billy decided to go with PG Adams and Russ basically all the, the last 24 minutes or roughly, yeah. um, Russ, I don't think Russ they, and Paul, Russ and Paul didn't come off the court in the fourth quarter or in the second half. Uh, yeah. Adams did a bit. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, and, like, it's risky. Uh, but the fact that offensively, as soon as Russ basically cooled off, like he had like a two, three possessions where, where he wasn't able to score, then Paul George took the lead. Mm -hmm. And he was able to go to Gobert because he, he was in foul troubles. And, and so, I mean, that was crucial. Um, mm -hmm. they, they were able to do it. Um, and... I saw like a lot of tweets and complaining about the officiating towards Gobert, and it's fine. I mean, the fourth the fourth foul is is just a bullshit call. Uh, there was yeah. no contact whatsoever. But mm -hmm. are you really complaining, uh, like saying that this officiating is is what made the series so far? No, I mean, like like we had bad calls because again, this is a, an incredibly difficult. Two teams to officiate by right. by the fact that their physicality is different from basically any other other any other teams in the league. Mm -hmm. So, I, I the think same that, same stuff was happening to Steve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, early well, in the series, 
Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, there was game. There were games where Steven just did, didn't even make contact. I remember a play on Donovan Mitchell, the one that that, that basically uh, was the changing point in game two. So I don't, I don't really think that even if that was a seriously bad call uh, on the official because there was no contact whatsoever, um, I don't think that this narrative has to be pushed uh, in like. In a sense that it turned in turn down the game. I, I think not having Gobert surely helped OKC a lot. But also let's let's just not put the, the referees into this uh, series at all because there are like very bad calls on both ends. Yeah. Yeah. My my stance on the referees hasn't changed and it's been I feel like it's been a poorly officiated series sure. for both teams. Exactly. That's and I don't that's and I don't think I don't think that it's gone one way or the other. I just feel like they're doing bad. <laughs> I exactly, like, uh, but it, it's it's extremely extremely hard to officiate. Uh, sure, there are tons tons of contacts, and you can you can basically call every single action two ways, mm -hmm. um, sort of. And so um, I don't really have I don't want to blame uh, the official uh, too much. Yeah, it's bad, but I don't think that it's impacting who's winning and who's losing. No, 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 no. This series uh, had like a two incredible performance uh, for two from two great players and three games played uh, to a different level from one of the two teams. This is the story and it would have been the story no matter what. Yeah. I mean, to me, it's Russ and Paul were the two best players in this game and that's why they won. Yeah, exactly. And in, and in the other games, it was Rubio, it was Donovan Mitchell, it was... Derek Favors, Joe Ingles, and those guys were almost no-shows. And when those yeah. two play, like those two should be the best players in this series, period. They should be. Yeah. By yeah. reputation, they are. Yeah. And tonight, they just finally showed that. And maybe this was the best performance of, you know, the Westbrook, you know, Paul George era, which still could be ending soon, but it was maybe their best performance together, playing off one yeah. another, leveraging yeah. their talents to help one another. We yeah. hadn't really seen that a whole lot, and so I'm I'm hopeful that they they can carry that momentum into Utah and play similarly. And I, I think the key stat of the game for me, and then we can go to answer some of these questions, mm -hmm. is 25 minutes and 25 seconds for Carmelo Anthony. Yeah, he wasn't providing anything offensively. Uh, throughout the game, uh, wasn't able to eat corner threes, and to be honest, he's reluct uh, re reluctant to to take those threes, and this helps Utah's defense too much. And mm -hmm. and on defense, I mean, you saw as soon as Billy decided to put him back, and it was it was the right call. I mean, again, you cannot play, you cannot bench him too much uh in my opinion was it the right call yeah i think so i think so Be because okay. because of what he did then yeah like and, and you know you know why i think that he did it it's because he hadn't played 30 minutes up to that point he had played tw no, no, he had played I mean, 20 minutes i mean i think that billy the decision of billy to put him back and and to me the 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 wording probably on the bench was clear like you have to you have to guard uh, he yeah. did two or three possessions where he was okay. Even did a very good screen for for PG. Uh, he fought very good for um, very well favors for a rebound. And then yeah. on the first switch, he was killed. And Billy said, "No way, I'm well, taking you out." Right. Well, so, and, I, and I just think, but the energy that he was able to provide, I think it's because he didn't play the whole first quarter. Oh yeah, you know, and that he was able that he hadn't played so many minutes up until that point that he could provide the energy because I do think that once he hits that like 30, 31, 32 minute mark, yeah, right. I feel like he is less effective from there on out. Yeah. But he has to realize that. Yeah. And to be, and to me, the way Billy used the substitution pattern tonight was, was great because yeah. he benched him in the third, uh, around the six minute mark, mm -hmm. like something like that. And then things were working perfectly. He kept Grant until the sixth minute mark in the fourth and said, well, okay. Amelo was heated on the bench. He, he wanted to come back. And I think that part of the, the, what, the, what the coaching staff did was, yes, you can, but you really have to provide. 
we are not screwing up with this time. Right. And he provided for a few minutes and he screwed up on a, on a switch because he wasn't, he wasn't as alert to, 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 to basically put Mitchell towards the right direction. This was the mm -hmm. main flaw of that, of that possession. Uh, and Mitchell was able to, to put it uh, with the right hand until, up until to the basket. So in that specific, specific moment, the coaching staff made the perfect decision is I don't want to take my chances. If Mitchell mm -hmm. gets hot, we are screwed. And so right. I think that this, this was a learning game for Melo. And maybe uh, in game six, Donovan will have more leverage on him and yeah. saying, well, that worked really well for us in game five. Yeah, it was a learning game and maybe a game, you know, their backs were against the wall. Mm -hmm. And they and you know they they played Russ and Paul the entire second half because they had to like this could be it like this could be the last yeah. game and yep. they did play Melo because this is it yeah and what are you gonna do you gotta you gotta try everything and and Billy was trying everything in the first half I was getting a little bit worried because he's throwing out these lineups that we really hadn't seen a whole lot of mm -hmm. and that hadn't really you know you had Josh Hustis out there which I thought he provided some fine minutes out there. Mm -hmm. um, you saw like these all shooting lineups and you're just kind of like, oh, like this, it just looked desperate mm -hmm. and it wasn't working. And it just felt like it felt like game five against Houston last year is what it felt like because mm -hmm. yeah. you had Vic out there running point and, you know, it was like it just felt like too little too late. And then all of a sudden Russell Westbrook gets hot and they're able to make that run, you know, and, you know, I mean, Jake Crowder was ridiculous tonight. He was yeah. he was so good in the first half. He had he finished with twenty seven points. Do you know how many threes he took tonight? Uh, I have the box score, so I know. He took fourteen. Yeah, fourteen. The Thunder yeah, took twenty one themselves. That's incredible. <laughs> that was crazy. Uh, okay, so let's answer some questions here. Um, let's specifically go to the Carmelo questions that people had. Um, uh, let's see. Do you think Melo is going to be mad with his minutes and demand more? This is Jason Harding. Uh, Melo did talk after the game. He didn't go to the podium. Um, I'm not really sure why or how that's, how they decide who, who goes up there, but he didn't go to the podium, uh, probably cause he didn't have such, didn't have a big impact on the game. Um, uh, and he was fine with it. Like he, he said that he understood that, you know, those, they went on a big run and he, he said that, that, that it was fine. And so there was no, like Mello was not unhappy. The locker room was buzzing. No, nobody was unhappy. So like we can, I don't think that, that Mello is going to cause problems, you know, because he only played 25 minutes. Honestly, it should be a wake up call that they played so well with him only playing during that stretch, what did he play? Like six to six or seven minutes total during mm -hmm. that during that final run. Should yeah, be a wake, that should be a wake up call. Yeah, yeah it, could, it could have been just five. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. I need I need to go look, but I mean, it's. I think that, he that went should out be a wake after up call. after the first two triples of Russ. Yeah. So say four or five possessions there, and then three and a half minutes uh, down the stretch. In the second half, he played ten minutes and nine seconds. Yeah, yeah, and I think then yes, it's roughly four minutes uh, and and change. Yeah, let me. I can get it later. because I've got all this paper. You seen all the oh, paper wow. that they have here? Oh, wow, that's great. Paper. They print lots <laughs> of stuff here, McKelly. So much stuff. It's unbelievable. Um, but yeah, it was just an un, just an unbelievable performance. But I don't think that Mello is going to cause problems. Now no, I don't. He... I don't think so. I, I don't really think so. And at some point, you have to realize, um, as a coaching staff, that you have to risk. Um, I've and the thing is, the starting lineup with Grant and Abrines wasn't working all that well in game in game five. Right. And but as soon as he took basically steam in the third, I was almost sure Billy Billy was. Uh, of the idea of not putting Melo back until like late in the fourth, which is mm -hmm. basically what he did. And maybe this will spark some life on Melo. 
offensively mm -hmm. to prove that he's able to provide. And to be honest, there will be adjustment adjustments for for from Utah's side on that specific lineup. Mm -hmm. And the first adjustment that comes to mind is we just help off Grant big time. Yeah. Uh, like it will basically not guarding him and put his man under the basket to put an extra help on Russell Westbrook. And and so it may be helpful to have um, um, like a galvanized Melo on, on the offensive end and, yeah. and see what happens. I really hope that Billy plays a brilliant more than 25 minutes in game six. He should. Yeah. He really should. Alex has proven that he can guard those guys. He guarded Joe Ingles well. Mm -hmm. He did leave him once, but for the most part, he guarded Joe Ingles well. Uh, he guarded I, I know Mitchell that he well. left him. Yeah. I, I know that he left him on that possession, but uh, it 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 was a missed rotation, and mm -hmm. and he had to go and go uh, and help back basically. Yeah. Um, so I, I and it was like it it sounded like a, a very very good pass from from Utah rather than um, because the help was needed there. Uh, mm -hmm. Like you don't have that help, you have a, a pass for for a dunk of favors under the basket, mm -hmm. and so you have to take away some. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I just wondered heading into this game tonight, like what do they have left? Like, do mm -hmm. the Thunder have this extra gear? Do they? Where's the desperation? And through the first half and through the first few minutes of the third quarter, it's just like it seems to have any of that. Yeah, like everything that we had kind of hoped this team could be, just flushed down the toilet. Mm -hmm. I just thought that that it was that it was gone. They had no mental fortitude. It's just all dead. And then they started to show some life, and I was just like, it's. I just it felt like it's too late. It's too late for you to show this ir urgency now. You're down twenty five. Mm -hmm. It's too yeah. late. You can't do that. Um, and, and, but yeah. they locked down on defense. Mm -hmm. They hit a ton of shots. Honestly, they got lucky that Utah yeah. missed the shots that they missed because Jay Crowder had some open shots that he just flat yeah. out missed. And Russell hit five threes, which is certainly luck. Um, yeah. But to have just the mental fortitude to play the kind of defense that they did, have the confidence to take and make the shots that they did, it really showed something. It showed something that I didn't, that we haven't seen really from this team, that really hasn't existed with this team yet. And so, there is hope that they can carry that over into game six and they can have that same confidence heading into, you know, the beginning of that game and they don't have to claw back and they don't have to count on five threes from Russ. And they don't have to count on hot shooting from Paul that they can just play their game and that they can attack. And a lot of it is Rudy Gobert was out of the game yeah. and that helped a ton. But when he came back in, their confidence didn't waver because it looked like Rudy was in their head in the, in the first yes. half. He I also mean, had like five, like too many fouls to defend really well. Yeah, that's and, true. That's true. And and that's that's part. I mean, forget about the foul number four. Um, I think that Billy's word in the press conference were really enlightening on the fact that he wanted to get uh, Gobert in, in foul trouble to mm -hmm. by going deep in the paint and trying to generate contacts as as many contacts as possible. Even if that means sacrificing a lot of offense, because you, you know that um, every possession there is not a good possession because of Rudy. Mm -hmm. uh, and so to, to me, the keys to game six are the following. Will OKC be able to generate contacts and generate fouls again deep in the paint? And B, uh, and this is a thing that I know it's... It's something that I always uh, kind of uh, stand by. Uh, uh, on like, I don't hate Russ's trees. I never hate those trees because, like, the maths tell me that uh, um, a pull-up tree from Russ is better than his mid-range in terms of uh, efficiency, in terms of point per shot. Mm -hmm. And it's always been the case. Uh, but I wonder if, in these series, um, the pull-up shot uh, is sorry, uh, the pull-up shot is. Um, uh, is basically more important uh, than any, in any other part of the, of this season, because of that. Um, because of the fact that if you do that, then uh, you have really a pick and roll that open up opens up. Yeah. And, 
Yeah. And that, that three that Russell hit to tie the game yeah. was the most, like that, if I were to define Russell Westbrook's career with one shot, it was mm-hmm. that one. Because he's just not make or miss. He's not afraid to shoot it. No, and no, no. no. Gonna go, I mean, it was just unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, it was the in this arena, it there was a few things. One, the beginning of the game, and really throughout the game, it was astounding how many open seats there were, and it's more apparent because you have like these t-shirts and the t-shirts yeah. that are like hanging on the on the chairs still, like shows that like those people didn't show up, that there were mm-hmm. so many people, but it was still so loud in here like i still have a pounding headache from the crowd which is just amazing like it was just cool because it didn't feel like that it it was pretty loud to start the game but like throughout it, like i mean this crowd went from booing i mean they were booing this team it was yeah. so so bad uh to maybe the loudest i've heard the arena since game five of the 2014 western semifinals against the clippers i mean that's probably mm-hmm. the last time that i heard it that loud uh it was it was unreal it really was uh teller bray do you think abrina starts in game six no he will not they're not going to change the starting lineup but i do hope that he plays 25 minutes or more like he really deserves to play 30 minutes brewer has has been good in spots but i he he deserves starter quality minutes at this point in the series yeah and things can very much change if uh, OKC okay, um, is able to to move on and and plays another team. Um, mm-hmm. Like Alex is good specifically in this matchup, and I yes. and I hope Billy plays the matchup a bit more. And so yeah, I don't expect him to start um, mainly because uh, I think that Alex is able to pick up the game when he sees where he's go- where where the game is going. And so giving Brewer the start and try to play his length a bit and try to guard to to like to tire already uh, Mitchell a few possessions because like mm-hmm. we, we we have to remember in game two Brewer was awesome uh, yeah on the long Mitchell so maybe this put a bit of pressure also on Brewer um, we said a very weird thing about like the fact that in the second half he was once more focused and was talking more he was on the bench like for basically all the runs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I heard the interview with with Eric Korn, and he was saying, "Yes, in the second half we were communicating more. You spent like yeah. fifteen minutes on the bench. Right. <laughs> that, that's where you were communicating, probably." <laughs> yeah, that's great. Let's see. Yeah, he played eight minutes and twenty six seconds in the second yeah, half. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. While uh, while Alex played fifteen minutes and thirty four seconds. So yeah, yeah it's great. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Um, Houston in game six, he played great D. He'll play. He played. He played tonight. He's going to play again. I don't know how many minutes he'll get, um, but he spelled Paul George in the first half. He played three. He only played three minutes and 21 seconds, but he was a minus five. But I thought that he played some good minutes. I think that that block shot that he had on Gobert was a, you know, brought some life into the team a little bit. Uh, he'll play. He, he's fine. I think he'll play you know, five minutes probably just to try to spell Paul. And that's probably that's probably it. Like that's his role is to just get give Paul a breather. Will be his role. Yeah, yeah. Play will Paul will play probably more than forty again. Yeah, yeah. Paul played forty four minutes and thirty nine seconds, and Russ played forty four minutes. It's going to be similar. Like they just have to. Those dudes have to play, and they have to take the most shots. And Melo cannot be that big a part of this. I mean, the the equation is Russell takes the most shots, Paul's second, and then who? cares who's next because it doesn't need to be anybody else nobody took more than six shots outside of those two russ had 39 field goal attempts tonight which is probably a little bit too much and and (laughs) paul (laughs) and paul had 26 shots which i think is great uh he took six threes he probably they probably need to they need to generate more than six for paul george 100 they need to be in the double digits for him yeah Uh, they need to be like jay crowder-esque attempts at like yeah they should have been him 14 instead of six yeah. but you know M- Melo took six shots steve t- took six Kruber took four and then the dudes on the bench like, barely shot the ball jamie grant was two of two houston smith one shot abrinas was one of three and then felton was one of two 
and the one that he missed was maybe the most abysmal step back oh, to that, and the, that was that was terrible <laughs> it was so bad yeah, so, hey, what, what, what are you doing like, <laughs> what, what's, what's that shot uh, about jay was so mad jay yeah. jay hates rim felton and he was so so mad about it that's funny yeah. Uh, I wonder what is happening with Tupat, though. Yeah, he was He's not had, like, a, a very, very. I mean, I was, I was op always hoping for him to, to be back for playoffs, to hit some trees, uh, but it's just sad. Like it's yeah. sad to see him playing like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I hope, I hope he bounces back. Uh, to me, the, the the problem is, and it was like throughout the the season. He's not going to play very good minutes um, if paired with a um, with a Jeremy Grant type center. Yeah, and so again, to me, the best thing could be bring him before Grant to sub Melo around the six minute mark in the first, mm -hmm. and play this full spaced lineup with him and Abrinas, George Adamson, and. Um, and Russ, yeah, his yeah, problem is Brett, that he, he's just not versatile enough. Like, no, 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 he's no, a no. he's like he's a four, yeah, period. Like, Jeremy yes. Grant can play five through two, really, if you need him to. And mm -hmm. uh, Patrick Patterson, he's a power forward who guards power forwards, and that's it. And if you ask him to do anything else, because he used to have the foot speed to guard threes and guard on the perimeter, like, he mm -hmm. in and against uh. The Cavs, he would defend LeBron a lot, but he yeah. he uh, he's a different guy, and his his role has been diminished. And like I don't know, like if opportunity is part of it, and yeah, probably like a, so. It's a it's a it's a piece of the puzzle, but some of it is that he has regressed. He has, and to be honest, he was chosen to to be uh, the starting power forward. Mm -hmm. who could have played in that specific setting probably 16 to 20 minutes together with Russ, um, Robertson, George, uh, Adamson, and, and I, I probably said them all. Um, so in that specific lineup, he made a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And and like his downside, like it was the, the fact that he was not a very good rebounder and so forth are, again, mask because you have Robertson, um, Westbrook, and Adams being three very good rebounders. And yeah. PG is a good rebounder as well. And if you have like a guy that doesn't demand touches and just one just is able to space the floor, then it makes sense. With Melo and Grant, not so much. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think another key to this game is that they limited Derek Favor's impact. Yeah. Um, because I think it, when he and Rubio are going off, like you're going to get what you're going to get from Mitchell and Gobert. Like their impact, you cannot take away their impact from the game. You can't. Um, but when you have Favors and Rubio going as well, uh, mm -hmm. it's it's too much to overcome. Yes. And so if you can limit those guys, because really the only guys that really went off for the Thunder were Paul and Russ. Yeah. And if those guys can rise above and be the best players in the series, and if Favors is his impact is diminished, then you're talking about you know a thunder win like that's how the thunder win so yeah um okay i think we're gonna we're gonna be done but i appreciate you joining me michele yeah well thank you for having me thank you guys for uh for listening and for watching and just hanging out with us we'll do we'll do another one of these friday night it's going to be late and i'm not very happy about it but that also oh, I'm, that, I'm very very happy that it's means michele can join us again so, yeah, yeah, I'll probably will. Uh, so we will do this again Friday night, which is really just Saturday morning. Uh, it's a 9.30 tip here in OKC. Um, so again, thank you guys for, for listening. You can share this. Uh, it's a nice little post game that you can share. You can share it on Facebook or whatever. It's on YouTube, so it's easy to share. So uh, we'll talk to you guys again on Friday um, with the Down to Dunk podcast and also that. But uh, this right here, Michele, if you didn't know, this is the reason that they won tonight. <laughs> bring, some, bring some. I was going straight. I was going straight gummy bears in the first half, and man, so they got these gummy bears. They're like this big. There's just these tiny little gummy mm -hmm. bears. 
and they're so good. Okay. <laughs> but uh, that was the problem. I switched to these. Bring like, some home and eat them during the game. I'm going to go buy a bag. I'm going to go buy, buy a bag, and I'll be eating them the whole time. So don't worry. Okay. We've, we've, got, we've got game six. Just like Russell said, they've got game six. They're coming back for game seven. I, I, I so, so hope that we can at least just get a game seven here in OKC, because I think it would be Just so for much. the candies. Just for the candies. I need candies, okay. free candy one more time, please. That's all okay. we need. All right, we'll, uh, we'll talk to you guys again Friday. Uh, you guys are great. Uh, have a good one.